This one comes out of G5 Football Daily. The G5 teams reportedly proposed as part of a college football super league. Now, this is something, and, and I, I would love to say, oh, this, is, this was my idea, but I'm sure lots of people were thinking of this at the time. But now <laughs> it's actually leaked that they're talking about a super league. Uh, the league, in this scenario, would be, would be comprised of eight divisions of 10 teams each. And I've got a chart, or I don't have a chart. There's a chart that's on here in a little bit. Uh, one of those divisions would include 10 members of the group of five, Boise State, James Madison, Liberty, Miami of Ohio, New Mexico State, Toledo, Troy, Tulane, UNLV, and UTSA. The, uh, in this scenario, the league would have 70 permanent members comprised of members of the former Power Five conferences. An under league division would consist of G5 teams that would change each year based on team performance. The top two teams would remain and the bottom eight would be relegated. So here's the... Uh, there's the relegation we were talking about not too long ago. They actually started to lay out what the individual components would be. In particular, I found interesting was NIL, that TV money distributed as follows, 5% to freshmen, 15% to sophomores, 30% to juniors, and 50% to seniors and grads. So that, I think, goes along with the Virginia NIL law now, that this is schools paying players there would be an nil roster cap so even more now we're, we're getting into the nfl style that you can only spend so much money on a team exceeding cap results in exceeding the cap results in punishment what that punishment is will vary based on you know how many occurrences how, and all how the that. ncaa is feeling that particular day yeah. <laughs> well if the ncaa ncaa is even part of this i think the idea here is that the ncaa is is worked right out of the system but i could be oh. wrong on that so then the calendar. So the season calendar would look like 14 a 14 game regular season over 15 weeks, a 16 team playoff over 5 weeks growing to 24 teams at some uh, point. Oh, oh, <laughs> on. This is the fun part. An all league spring games with festivals. So basically cool. all of your bowl games will now be in April at the beginning of the season. Which I mean okay. that's right. fun. Right. I would enjoy yeah. that. Yeah. But yeah, essentially it puts the bowl season at the front end instead of the back end. Although I'm guessing there would still be, well, I don't know. I'm, I'm not even, they didn't even talk about whether or not there would be bowl games at the end of the season outside of the playoffs. Well, probably not outside the playoffs. It would probably be the playoffs are the bowl games. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven divisions here. The eighth division is the under league. There's Michigan dead center in the Midwest division. If, if this is the future of college football, what, what do you think? I think it's going to have to be. Yeah. I I mean, yeah, I, I think this is going to have to be. Now, I, I guess I'll I'll start with a couple of points. The reason I'm, I'm really excited about this and then the reason I hate this. So I'm kind of, I've got two extremes going here. <laughs> so the reason I'm really excited about this is, is uh, uh, for a couple of reasons. First off, I think a conference game versus Cincinnati, Michigan versus Cincinnati would be dope. <laughs> I don't know why. So th this is kind of interesting going over this story now with what we just discussed with the law in Virginia, the NIL law in Virginia. Mm -hmm. So the NIL law, what we had just discussed was that basically the, the NCAA cannot punish schools in Virginia for paying players directly. So now schools in Virginia can pay players directly, whether that's through a collective, whether that's through uh, marketing, they act as a spokesperson, something like that. Great. But now you're getting into a situation where you haven't yet addressed the question of revenue sharing, broadcast revenue sharing. And that's really where the big problem with NIL has been all this time. This, I think, addresses that. Because if you set up the college football like this, you're basically mirroring, mirroring exactly what the NFL is doing. And the NFL does, does profit sharing um, from a national level and a local level. Um, it consists of all the different uh, TV deals and stuff like that, but but essentially the national uh, revenue that it, it gathers from broadcasts and all that is shared equally among all 32 teams. Now, I understand 70 is a lot more than 32, but I'm curious with the amount that is generated, <laughs> they could share that equally with all 70 teams and then have a salary cap on top of that to be able to pay the players directly. Now, again, College rosters are a lot bigger than professional rosters, but maybe this means that uh, college rosters get smaller so that players get a bigger chunk of the money. 
Although that being said, they wouldn't necessarily have to because those players would still be able to sign marketing deals. They'd be eligible to sign uh, extra deals with like the school and stuff like that. This plus the Virginia law totally fixes the problem, in my opinion. Maybe not totally. I don't know. I haven't figured out all the issues with it. But you'd have revenue sharing essentially fixed at this point. And then that law keeps the NCAA from being able to tamper in anybody's NIL collective or the way that schools are paying players. As long as the players are contractors, not employees, then everything's fine. I think that this is perfect. <laughs> what I do see a downside with is the five weeks of playoffs plus the 14 regular season games. I mean, mm -hmm. these are college kids and it's football. They're beating each other up on a weekly basis for nine months out of the year, eight mm -hmm. months out of the year. And, and then they're going to extend it for almost another month and a half. That's too much. They would at that point have to decrease their rosters because there are some kids that just would not feasibly be able to play. And so eventually what I think you would have had end up happening is that players wouldn't be able to play because there are some players, let's be honest, there are, players on Michigan's roster right now that have absolutely no dream or hope of going pro. They just, they got to college, they walked on, they said, if it works out great, if it doesn't, that's okay. I'm, I've got my communications degree. I'm going to go into marketing. At that point, then maybe the college teams start looking at reducing their roster size so that they get players that they have a better potential of making it to the NFL. And that gives them incentive to then stick out the 14 game regular season plus another five weeks of playoffs. And, and then you, you get a cascading effect where that then affects the salary cap, how much they're able to then pay each player. This is just going to end up turning yeah. into another level of amateur football. That's all it is. And maybe well, that's OK. Maybe that's fine. I mean, with the with the pay involved, it, it becomes minor league football. Yeah. And and. Now with the uh, UFL coming up, I mean, there are more options for, for college players. If they don't make the NFL, go to the UFL for a little bit, develop, get better, and then you've got another shot at the NFL. There's a UFL kicker right now that's, that's putting some NFL kickers to shame with the way that he's kicking. I think he plays for the Michigan Panthers. He had a couple of 60 yarders for the win uh, a couple of weeks ago. So yeah, I mean, go to the UFL, develop for a little bit longer. You'll get paid even, mm -hmm. and then go to the NFL. Or become a coach. Now, okay, I, I apologize if you explained this already, but could this work in such a way if that Super League became uh, a corporation in and of itself, like the NFL? Say, mm -hmm. call it call it the CFL, even though I, I understand that's Canadian, but let's just call it the United States CFL. Could the players then simultaneously be employees of the U.S. CFL and students at the school? That's a question for the lawyers. I'm just wondering if that resolves the issue of employees at schools starting unions. Now they would be employees at a corporation where they could start a union uh, just as a normal course, like it's done. And then the school doesn't have to worry about it. What this could end up doing, I mean, because the NFL has the NFLPA. So the NFL has a players union. Right. Um, and so far that hasn't screwed over the NFL in terms of being able to play. So it has. Think, no, it has caused shutdowns. Oh, I there have been that. there have been years where the NFL has has not played a full season because they've not been able to reach a contract with the union. I um, can't remember the last time that happened, but I know it did happen. Sam Hartman's looking downfield for Adrian oh! Carter. Carter almost has a one-handed catch. Almost. 